my guest today, Camille, was in late stage heart failure. Yes. She was given no more than a year to live without a transplant. She'll tell us about that. But moreover, after she had gone into a coma, she had entered into a demonic space, a satanic uh, environment. She'll talk to us about that. And uh, without getting too much into, into that, you're, you're running good, going to stay tuned for something that will, at the end, bless you tremendously and also teach each and all of us about what happens after, after we uh, enter into the afterlife. So, Camille, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here. Well, Camille, let's start with, now, you were a healthy person. Mm -hmm. um, Fairly. Heart, I've always had heart problems. You, okay, you always had heart problems, but there was a cause for this heart ailment that you had, Mm -hmm. uh, an infection that caused, but that's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that because you had struggled with, with heart disease for how long? All my life. I actually had um, open heart surgery at six weeks old and had all kinds of problems with my heart. And so I was supposed to even die then <laughs> and yeah. God always kept me here. So, and you look like a healthy person. And I've been in, as uh, some of our audience knows, in the cardiovascular space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you start that young, uh, mm -hmm. that you are having heart problems, um, it doesn't bode well for, for the future, does future. it? Yeah, you're right. You're right. And so I, um, just the grace of God, honestly, uh, kept me alive. And then I've tried to take care of myself. I've, I've exercised since I was 18. And um, I've had some problems, though, on and off with addiction, and I'm not going to lie and stuff. So that was all the grace of God <laughs> that mm -hmm. I'm here and as healthy as I am. Well, coping with heart disease, mm -hmm. you know, and not being able to do the physical activities that others mm -hmm. uh, are doing that are, are healthy, you know, that takes its toll. But there was a progressive, or di I should say digressive, that is your heart was failing, Yes. To the point um, now, at at, uh, at what age did you? I was 38. 38 where you were diagnosed. So I was diagnosed with the four stage heart failure. And um, I didn't even find out until a year after I came home when I was 39 that um, on my 40th birthday, I'll never forget that we had, I found out that we had toxic mold in our home. And I just knew that was what was causing all the infections because I started getting infections again and uh, and we couldn't figure it out. And so uh, my ex-husband uh, went into the attic and saw the mold there. And then we had it tested and found out it was toxic. And so um, all these skin infections, I kept scratching because it was extremely itchy, the rashes I would get. And they ended up going septic and I had a pacemaker. And they got on my pacemaker and the leads were a direct highway to my heart. So mm. it caused um, heart failure from that. My heart was literally blowing up, the, the doctor said, and they couldn't explain why. Uh, yeah. But I had, unbeknownst to them, um, because they didn't test the right side of my heart only, they had tested my left side and I was spiritual. You know, I became really close to God then. And I said, the Lord told me we need to test the right side the, or have an echo on the right side of my heart. And she laughed and I'll never forget it. The doctor in Portland laughed at me and said, we got it good enough. <laughs> and if she would have tested that one time, it would have saved me all losing my leg, everything. So, um, yeah. So <laughs> and the right side is where the, you know, the blood is going through the right side mm -hmm. of the atrium to the ventricle. And then I also had two, um, two by two in, in deep incisions and, uh, or excuse me, uh, infections that were like marks in my heart that were deep infections. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lesson learned uh, yeah. for our audience as well in terms of mold, mm -hmm. you know, that if you have a home that is infested with mold, maybe it's a good idea to get it tested because that yes. can have a deleterious effect. Mm -hmm. But you had a tendency toward, uh, you know, a susceptibility, let's put it that way, toward an, the infection 
because of your essentially lifetime uh, mm -hmm. of, of uh, heart disease. Yes. And now this was kind of the culmination of it. Mm -hmm. So what was the prognosis at this point once it was diagnosed and, and the Lord actually you know, gave you a word of knowledge that they needed to test the right side and they finally did and found, oh my goodness. Well, they only this. did that when after I was already uh, had all the strokes <laughs> at a different hospital. At mm. Oregon Health and Science University, they finally found it. And, uh, and that's only because I had all those strokes. And mm. so they found that and then they were able to treat that. And so I was on three courses of antibiotics, excuse me, two courses of extremely strong antibiotics, the strongest you can have IV for three months straight mm. in the wow. hospital. Yeah. Yeah, and at some point, some of those antibiotics may lose, start to lose their effectiveness if you're on it for too long. Yeah, and I remember being so sick on them. I just dreaded when they would come in to, mm. to refill the bag or do whatever, because it, it seemed like every couple of days they had to do that. So, mm. yeah, and it was, I would get really sick right after they would do that. So, so were, the, uh, were the doctors, the cardiologists uh, encouraging you? at that point to get a transplant? Well, the woman that um, I was describing, I don't want to mention the hospital, but the other hospital in Portland that said we got it good enough. Uh, she was the one who told me I had a year to live without a heart transplant. She also told my family members, my sister specifically, um, that they better get a counselor for grieving because I was most likely going to die. She was speaking. I had um, heard many people in near death talking about people speaking death over them. And she was, I had a couple, several people, honestly, speaking death over me. And uh, it was just, God is greater. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> well, just, Camille, yeah. you're giving us some uh, lessons, some spiritual lessons, which is that very dynamic that mm -hmm. um, you want to surround yourself with people of faith. Yes. Yes. Not people who are saying you're going to die. Yes, exactly. Now, but and that was the thing is I had more people of faith in my life because I was a strong Christian that canceled all that out and some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had so many people praying for me and, right. and they're people of spiritual warfare and, and uh, you know, all that, the healing, all that. <laughs> and why, that's why you're here with us oh, now. Mm -hmm. as Absolutely. the power of those prayers. And obviously you were praying as well. Oh, yes. Um, mm -hmm. But but that that still you were on the pathway to entering into the space before you had your near-death experience. But your near-death experience, Camille, um, led you into a dark place. Yes. Uh, but tell us what led up to that were you then entered into a space that really none of us want to go. Sure, sure. So um, August 12th, or excuse me, August of 2012, I was diagnosed with having a year. Then that following March, I just had flu-like symptoms. And so I was going to go to bed that night. I'll never forget it. And the doctor actually later on said I would have been dead if I would have went to sleep that night. But I had just my body was really sore. And then um, I remember just getting all of a sudden really dizzy. And for the first time ever, I told someone to call 911. And then right then I went into strokes at my house. And uh, as soon as I went into strokes, I had, uh, wow, there was a lady who, who came to get me in the ambulance that I'll never forget because it was demonic. And she told me that um, I better shut up or she was going to shove something down my throat. And, um, and then I just passed out. So I don't know what happened. But um, so as soon as I did that, I started going into realms, like earthly realms, but they were darker than, than this earth. And every time they were darker and darker. And every unspoken nightmare I'd ever, because they're so gross or something you would never want to describe to anyone that I thought of in my life happened on the way down, just on the way. So I would be thrown into like a, a realm, be tormented, tortured, like you can't believe. Then I'd be thrown out. And then it was blacker than black. And I'd be falling. 
And while I was falling, I had, I'll never forget, six demons on each side. And they were tearing at my arms. And I remember seeing my tendons, everything. And they were each on one side. And I knew that they would be rewarded, whoever got me there first, because they were, I just knew instinctively. And then um, I'd be thrown into another realm, tortured by those same demons. But they would sometimes be in human form, doing the atrocious things to atrocious things to me. Then I'd be thrown out again, and then it would be the same thing. But the third time I was thrown out, after the third realm, um, I was thrown out. There was this huge, just disgusting being there. And you know, it's Satan automatically, you just know. And I couldn't even I was so scared to even glance at him. But unfortunately, when you're outside of your body, you can see a whole 360 or whatever they call that of, of everything. So you are tormented just with that as well. So I was actually tormented for years after just knowing every single thing they did. Um, by, so could by you knowing. see this as a third party to yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. it's horrifying. And, and uh, but being you, it's crazy. <laughs> I can't explain it. But then this being Satan was over there and I'll never forget him. He had the body of a lamb but it was blacker and just huge or uh, horrendously black fur, um, wh whatever they call it, but it had slime throughout it. So it was just extremely dirty and old looking and just gross. And his head was a wolf <laughs> and his mm -hmm. eyes were these red beams that would just go toward me. And he kept whispering something I'll never forget. He kept telling the demons, just get her down here. She'll never know she doesn't belong. And it was true because at that time I had, for some reason, forgot about my relationship with God or even his name at that time completely. Like it was, it was just crazy. And now I look back and realize that was so he could show his glory that he fulfills his promises to us by rescuing us when we don't even think about him. Mm. We don't even have to think about him for him to fulfill what he said he would do for us. And so as I'm going, I remember saying the last thing I said to myself was, I guess I'm going to hell. And as soon as I said that, I felt we all felt this being come above us and he folded his arms like this and put his hand feet wide with a stance, strong stance and was looking down at us. And he said, I don't think so. <laughs> hmm. I'll never forget that. He just said, I don't think so. And then why, when he started speaking, I looked for whatever reason, I looked to see where Satan and the demons were and they were completely gone. Just oh. one syllable. <laughs> Wow. So who was this being then, Camille? Oh, so it was God. It was absolutely it was God. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he picked me up. One of the most beautiful things that ever, well, I think probably the most beautiful thing that's ever happened to me, besides his grace was showing me heaven, is that he came with his mighty right, right hand and pulled me up. And I remember going specifically up into my body. And then I was like, where am I? What's going on? Because I uh, saw these tiles above my head. And uh, then I heard all of a sudden all the hospital uh, noises, the beeping and uh, on the machines. And I said, oh, I'm in the hospital. And right when I said that, I was staring up at the tiles. The tiles turned to clouds, <laughs> these mm. beautiful clouds. And then this mighty right hand, because it was always his mighty right hand, comes back in. He reaches in my body, pulls me out, and I look like myself, except I'm like see-through. And But I have features, but not quite heavenly yet. So he pulls me out, and I remember his hand was so large that my hair, it was long, and it only went up like not even probably a tenth of his fingernail mm -hmm. down. And then he takes me, and I remember the first thing, though, when he took me, you get eternity you get eternity. It's hitting, it's hitting you in the face that how serious eternity is. And thank God I was saved. Thank God. And, and then I remember saying to myself where, cause I didn't realize who it was yet. Cause I just knew he had so much power. And I said, wherever this being wants me to go, I'm going, <laughs> it doesn't matter. All I said, I felt all this power on earth 
But wherever this being wants me to go, I'm going. And then he takes him, his hand or his arm and he goes Phew! and shoots me up to heaven, shoots me up. And as soon as I start flying up, my arms go like this. And I have an angel on each side, barely cusping under my elbow. And they go Phew! and we go so fast. And I remember as we're going, I'm seeing the universe, you know, I'm seeing all the beautiful outer space, just everything I've been fascinated with. I've always liked astronomy. And, um, and but the crazy thing is I saw the gold accents on the white robes, but these angels were so huge, I could never see their faces because I was trying hard. <laughs> and then um, I remember saying to myself, I need to know how fast I'm going so I can tell people. And then uh, not realizing I was coming back, of course. And then I, I heard, I, first thing I thought of was those tubes at the bank. <laughs> because you just go destination oriented and you're just. Whoo! And I don't know why I thought of that, but I did. And then they dropped me off somewhere and it was still kind of outer space right there. But I knew I was under a, a place, some kind of city or a place. And then I look for the angels because I'm still trying to see them. And they were completely gone. They just disappeared. Well, I go up slowly into this elevator. It was like an upward elevator, very uh, slow compared to the ride I just took. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, and I remember just getting, I knew, I knew I was being changed into total perfection. And I didn't know all that entailed until I came back. But that meant character, thoughts, um, everything. It was uh, your body, your soul, your uh, everything. And um, so I knew. And then I remember standing there. I was like, whoa, where am I at? And uh, then that was the first time I heard God's voice. And he said, you, he said, you no longer have to fear. And then I just realized it just everything flooded over me the love the peace the gosh the joy and i remember thinking on earth if i'd ever felt anything like that before and i did i stopped myself because it's a joke <laughs> to even yeah. think that way yeah and so he um and then the second thing he says to me is you have a form and it is perfect and then I was like, and then I started feeling all this energy, this perfect energy that I cried for years coming home afterwards because of just, I felt I would pinch my skin after I came home because this cage we're in with your skin. Um, and, uh, but I got all excited and I realized I could run. And because I've always never been able to run with my heart problems all my life. And I would be made fun of and stuff. And uh, I said, I can run. I can run. And I'm like running in place. And then all of a sudden, I lift up off the ground. And I go chuk, 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 four times around heaven. And it, there were tracers <laughs> that came around following me. And then I remember God saying, are you having fun yet? <laughs> yeah, they were what now? They were... They were like tracers. I was going so fast. Tracers. Like beams of lights. Oh, okay. Like, I was going like, 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 the speed like of beams light. coming off of you or something? Yeah, like, a, like I just remember I'm going so fast. It's like a like a cartoon or something where Jack Jack always from The Incredibles always reminded right. me of that. <laughs> but um, it was like I went so, God was showing me I went so fast that I left light <laughs> uh, behind me lightning uh, like not lightning but light and Just, you have uh, never run lightning. that uh remotely oh, as fast no, no. in fact you couldn't I'm, run I'm as, a, so as a young person god, yeah god took me off the ground <laughs> mm. yeah wow. and um wow. yeah so i <laughs> yeah and then i just remember thinking i felt such love and I, I purposely thought of the person on earth that had hurt me the most when I died. And, you know, the only thing I could think of with them, and they had hurt me pretty bad, is I wished I would have loved them more. Mm. And then um, and then I just saw God and Jesus hanging out <laughs> they mm. had on their thrones. And they would joke around all day. They would just laugh and laugh. And they would be looking down on us laughing. And so being myself... Um, Cause you're still your same personality. <laughs> I said, what are you guys laughing at? And he goes, he goes, I'm looking down on the ones I love. And I remember him laughing at people um, looking down on the earth, laughing at people like, like we're like babies. When, when a baby gets frustrated, 
(laughs) because I used to be specifically, I used to get mad at myself when I lose my keys or something like that. Well, they're laughing at that stuff. They're like, oh, that silly girl or whatever. It's so trivial. They're not mocking. They're just, there's a joy there in that, you know, if they only knew sort of thing. Yes. So I changed after I came back. I no longer get upset over those kind of things. I laugh at those kind of things because I know they're sitting up there watching me laughing. And then when I came back, I remember looking up the word beloved and just because I've been fascinated with the word sense or the word of God sense. And you know what beloved means? The ones I love. Mm. Yeah. So he literally told me he was looking down on his beloved. The, the term I often use, because that's how the Lord referenced me in heaven. Oh, wow. That, uh, that's what he called me, beloved. He calls each of us that. I'm confident of that, yeah. uh, his beloved. Mm-hmm. Um, when you were, we'll get back to your in heaven and the joy and the... Jocular, jocularity that uh, that is happening mm-hmm. while you're in this space. You're running like the wind. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have that joy as well. You're freed mm-hmm. of the uh, your damaged body. physical body. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you were traveling with this, I think you referenced this uh, person as you were. Tr- you, well, first of all, we started in in a place that was, would you say hell, or what was that, uh, or maybe the second it heaven? It was on the way. Uh, it wasn't quite actual hell, because that's okay. complete. Right. Um, yeah. So but there I, it was on the way. Sorry. Yeah, and we've had people that have testified likewise that there are gradations, you know, yeah. that one can go through in the space on the way to hell. Yes. They're basically, Satan was saying, you know, before she uh, realizes that she's been bought and paid for by the blood mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ, uh, before she wakes up to that, let's get her into the whatever, so like weird. our hell. Yeah. And uh, but God wasn't going to let that happen. Oh. No. Nope. Uh, and what not. you referenced the the figure that was taking you initially, and in sort of a, as a as a person or as a figure, I forget the exact term you used. But did you recognize him immediately as God? And, and if oh, so, how Yes, did I he knew appear? by his power. I, I, at fr- well, when I was in the, in the hell space, when he came above us, mm-hmm. I just knew this, this mighty man was there or, or being was there that could do whatever he wanted, just the power. And then me seeing the demons flee, I knew it was God. Mm-hmm. because just the sound of his voice they ran and i remembered god and i remembered everything and then i went up to my body and then he said now you can go to heaven and took me he didn't say that personally but you know um he just said you know he took me there after that and i think he took me i've always thought he took me there after because i was horrifically tortured that um i actually had severe ptsd for years after that mm-hmm. um yeah, because it was like I was being my spiritual body. These things were doing to my spiritual body. It wasn't just my physical. And uh, where a man could hurt you like that, it was uh, your spiritual body. So it really affected me a lot. And then, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, uh, virtually everyone that we've interviewed that has had a hell experience. Mm-hmm has suffered from PTSD. And there have been those who, and you actually had the redemptive uh, exposure to God, Mm -hmm. but initially they had, we had uh, a few that uh, God gave a revelation of heaven to actually heal them of PTSD. Yes. (laughs) Uh, were you have you have you been healed now or there's no oh, yes oh definitely action? yes mm-hmm. well it was funny I tell people this all the time that we, I would sit there I would even hide it was two and a half years later and I cried every single day because I miss God the horrors that happened but mostly because I miss God 90 mm-hmm. percent and uh and I remember I was in the bathroom because I would hide to cry because it was getting ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> so mm-hmm. I was hiding in the bathroom to cry. And then God spoke to me and said, well, Camille, because that's how he would speak to me in heaven. He would always answer, well, well, Camille, it was adorable. So he goes, um, well, Camille, if you are still drinking and carousing like you used to, you'd be dead in hell right now. 
Mm. So it's time for you to get up and share what I've done. Mm. And I'll never forget it. Wow. And I stopped. I stopped. Seems like you, he knew you needed kind yeah. of some levity, you know, oh, yeah. just as a almost a curative effect having gone through this horrific yes. uh, space. So, mm -hmm. um, well, let's go back to heaven if a mo for a moment, if you if oh, you're I'm willing to. So Absolutely. you are uh, you are there with the angels, and did yeah. they look differently? Did they, they you said they were gargantuan, uh -huh. uh, and then did they look humanly? And then you saw, obviously, God was with you at this point. Did He manifest differently in this place where you were with sure. Him in heaven? Did He look different? Yes. Well, they actually, the angels I saw, um, first of all, God would give um, announcements throughout the day. And every time he would, these angels, all different sizes, all different sizes, they would stand and do um, what I found later to be the um, a military stance um, where they put their arms behind their their head, kind of spread their legs, strong stance every time out of respect when God would speak. And he would just do that to all the people there. And um, but the angels were all different sizes. And I remember seeing one of them working on the mansions and he was nailing the roof on to one place. And he reached all the way across the roof and was nailing with gold nails the other mm. side. <laughs> ah. And then the angels, there were two little ones that were placing bows on the on the gates like there's a gate a big gold door like huge massive gold door and on the walls they were placing bows of all my favorite colors but all mixed together and they were mm -hmm. tiny they were little yeah. angels <laughs> and uh, so i never quite understood that because i wasn't going back in there you know but yeah. i think it was obviously for me to tell you but somebody goes um camille's here camille's here and all these hundreds of people came gathering and i said no way i affected that many people and yeah. um and then they were I saw, expecting you. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And then I saw this little boy crawling at the back. And I said, I said, oh, my God, who is? And he always answered my questions by a second or third word, God, always, except mm. for the two I'll tell you about. But he always answered in a second. And he goes, well, Camille, he goes, that's your son. <laughs> and I had lost a baby in 2010 at four and a half months. Yeah. You met your, your son that you mm -hmm. lost? At and two my and daughter a half months in heaven was he still a oh. child yeah he was the oh. same age he would have been on earth wow yep and he was um just heading toward me i'll never forget his little sash over his bottom <laughs> mm. and he had like a little brown belt and uh and they would um all the boys had uh for some reason all the boys had animals with them they had that they would play with and they were tigers, bears, lions, uh, whatever they wanted, probably. But my boy had a black tiger with blue eyes like his. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And my daughter would run to the uh, lake, the crystal lake every morning. And there were all kinds of men fishing. And I love that. But I don't know how that works because there's no debt. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I still laugh about that because there are tons of men in their cute little fishing boats and no motors or anything, just sitting there enjoying everything. And uh, But my daughter would always run down to the side every morning and feed butterflies and hummingbirds out of her hand. And she was the same age she would have been on Earth. Everybody went to about Christ, from what I saw, Christ's age. And you returned to that when you came, if you were older when you came there and uh you had skin that was translucent and shiny like mm -hmm. uh, sparkly not even just shiny but mm -hmm. sparkly incredibly beautiful but mm -hmm. you had the same hair and the same facial characteristics but perfected mm -hmm. and um and so you knew people that you knew mm -hmm. you just yeah. instinctively knew them mm -hmm. well i echo much of what you're you're saying actually in in terms of the uh what what you were beholding yeah. um i i had missed the part of your sister having uh because i was studying your your account prior to this uh, interview of course yeah. but your sister had had died at at uh as at what age before oh. she went to heaven that is she clinically died is that oh, was not that my the case? sister uh -uh. oh i'm sorry okay so that wasn't That's the case okay. uh no 
that no, I didn't. My sister just was there when they told her I was gonna die. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I misunderstood. Oh, that's there. okay. Oh, no yeah. problem. I'm glad you. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. but your son was the exception mm -hmm. in that he was the age he would have been. What age would that have been? Uh, well, it was 2010. This was 2013. So I had lost him at four and a half months. So he was about two. A so, he, and that's interesting because we've heard that before, and I also saw children in heaven. It seemed as though uh, God was so loving towards you that he wanted you to meet your son as he was as a child and that he was living out his childhood in heaven. I mean, wouldn't that be the best childhood ever? To, oh, ever. Yeah, you're I mean, right. That's, then, that's better than being uh, raised in an amusement park. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I remember all the out of all the people, the mo there were the most baby in babies. The babies were the most of all uh, degrees of people. There were millions of them for miscarriage, abortion, and all that kind of stuff. Millions yeah. and millions of babies. And God has reminded me because I haven't been able to have children on earth. I have two stepdaughters that are like my children, though. But He's reminded me that you will be the mother of many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in heaven so don't you worry and uh i want to tell you the most important part to me i remember sitting on the stairs and i'm just looking around and it was funny because like i said every question i have for god he interrupted by in a only way god could right <laughs> and by the second or third word with well camille and answer my questions but these he let me fully ask and i think that's so i could come back and tell you everybody but uh, the first one is, so I'm looking around on the steps, just looking around me and just saying, how can it be that I'm here? How can it be? I was a sinner on earth that I said, and I never asked for forgiveness before I died for things I'd done recently or, um, you know, I never, that's what I said to him is I never asked for forgiveness for the sin I had done on my, on my, um, before I died. And he said, he said, that's, he said, it's because of the blood. Mm -hmm. And I never even knew what the blood meant. Honestly, I was saved, thank God, but I'd never really studied the blood. I just thought, you know, it's from him dying and sacrificing himself, but I didn't think it's for all our sin. That's why he says mm -hmm. it's for the forgiveness of all sin, <laughs> mm -hmm. not just the ones we remember to repent of, mm -hmm. you know, the ones that he knows we're going to do. Um, but we have to have, he knows. And then the second thing is I said, but I had addictions on earth. I had things I had not overcome. And he leans down at me because he's just huge. <laughs> he had a human type form there. Um, and he leans down and he points his finger in my face, this huge finger. And he said, and make no mistake, Camille, I know everyone's heart. Mm. And because I would, I would often cry because I had a dependency to, to pain pills because, but I was in horrific pain, mm -hmm. but I knew that I shouldn't, because everybody tells you if you have any kind of thing, basically, if you're not perfect, you're not going to heaven, you know, that's right. like a lie that Satan loves. And yeah, so that's, a, that's I, a lie. That's an absolute yes. lie. Yeah. Because we can there, never know perfect people who are, yeah. who are believers yeah. or. Perfect, yeah. maybe perfected in heaven, but not on earth. We are, yes. And um, he said, or I, because I had that addiction, I would cry and cry and ask God to change me, you know, and ask him for forgiveness. And, and uh, I knew I was going to be dying, so I was trying to get off these, but I would get extremely sick and the pain because of my blood infection was so horrible. And I couldn't have any quality of life that way. And uh he just like his word says, he heard every tear, you know, he, he kept it in his hand and, it, and he hears all of our tears. Mm -hmm. And so as long as we are trying and our hearts are good for God and they love him, I think that we, we are great in his mm -hmm. word, in, in his world, in his kingdom. He loves us so much more than we could ever imagine. And, um, I remember it's all simultaneous time there. So when, so I never came back and felt like I wish I would have spent more time with my son or anyone. And that was so strange to me because I'm a person that thinks overthinks. honestly. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm working on that. That's a work in progress, but, um, and I couldn't believe that I was completely content and happy with how I, 
how I left things there. But he uh, he was sitting next to this great big lion, and the lion had eyes of fire and this beautiful white fur, and he was three stories tall, God told me. Mm. And he had uh, the tips appeared to be drenched in blood. And I've been saying this the whole time since I came back. And then I read the word in Revelation. It says Christ will return with a white robe with the tips drenched in blood. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And this, yeah, this lion had eyes of fire. I got to see Jesus and he, um, I didn't speak with him. I didn't speak to him, but I saw him and God. And when they would joke around half the day, you know, they would just be laughing and he would always swing his head back laughing so hard. And I remember on the steps looking at his teeth <laughs> and he had the most beautiful smile that you'd ever see. And, uh, and his eyes were blue and he had, I remember coming back saying he had spiky hair. He had shorter, like, like stylish honestly, (laughs) like here. And I remember just thinking, am I crazy or something? And then about two years after I went to a friend's house, who's a strong Christian. And she has this painting from this little girl called a, her name is a Cayenne Cromeric. And yeah, she's a painting. Yeah. uh, The Prince of Peace. And Mm -hmm. I started shaking and crying. And I said, that's him. That's Mm -hmm. him. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe that I got to see that again. It was so comforting. And, uh, but my heart was broke. He told me, uh, when he said, are you having fun yet? He said, now, cause now you have to go back. And I just, I saw this crystal heart, like form in the, what I believe to be the justice seat is where I was. And, uh, this crystal huge heart, the most beautiful thing. And I remember it just crashing to the ground. Like I just, it, it was like a representation of my spirit at that moment when he told me I had to come back and then, but I was looking for the pieces and there were no pieces. Mm -hmm. And then that was the biggest moment to me was when he got up from his throne and I said, no way does the maker of everything care care if I'm hurt. And he walked to me and he held my hand Mm -hmm. (laughs) and, uh, we took three steps and we were in outer space over the earth. And I remember just seeing the earth. I still want a painting or something of that someday because it was so incredible and huge, <laughs> just mm-hmm. huge. <clears throat> and I got to ask him a couple questions. And one was, uh, how many universes are there? <laughs> mm-hmm. And so he pulls out this accordion. <clears throat> and it has the most magnificent colors and just shining everywhere. And uh, But when I came back, he never told me a number. And when I came back, I had to learn to um, comprehend again. I had to learn to write, uh, read, think. Basically, I had to learn how to swallow food, mm. um, everything, walk, uh, talk, obviously, everything. So it was a while before I could count again. And I put the accordion from in my memory <clears throat> on a piece of paper because I could write before I could count. And I remember running to it one day, realizing I could count with my therapy <clears throat> when I was at the rehab hospital part. And and I go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. <laughs> what he told me. So wow. seven universes. Yeah. And so then did I, he bring to mind those answers to you and when you recovered? Some of them. Well, the <clears throat> well, the accordion, I knew he had told me that it's oh yeah, he did say that when I was with him in outer outer space. It sounds so weird to say that, but but when I was with him, he You're said You're not alone. Many yeah. of ours, including yours truly. <laughs> oh. I spoke oh, great. about this, uh, the galaxies, yes. Oh, oh, well, that's awesome. <laughs> well, the, the heavens, you know, in the Bible is uh, plural. So oh, we yeah. assume that heavens, right. the first heaven would be the galaxies, the heavens that we oh, re- yeah. refer to in, uh, in some writings. The second mm-hmm. would be uh, maybe a second heaven. Paul talked about the third heaven. Anyway, but yeah. I, I don't want to get into the weeds on that because okay. I want to hear your story. And I apologize for that, but uh, oh, no. let us uh, please continue. So um, he had told me that when he spread this great accordion, colors I'd never even seen too. Um, and I've always, purple is my favorite color. So I remember the purple just, wow, being just magnificent. And he said, the top of each folder is how many universes there are. And that's why as soon as I could write, I went one, two, three, and then I could count 
the top of each folder when I came back or when I could count again. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, he also said, I said, why are we here? Why do we have to do this? And he goes, that's easy. It's to love. Mm. <laughs> and I just, I still just can't believe it was that easy. The answer, <laughs> but that's God, you know, that's how I, one of the ways I always know his voice is because he's not like me where I can over talk. He's very that, you know, this mm -hmm. is how it is. Yeah. Well, the acts of love are the most beautiful acts of all. Mm -hmm. And if something is not done in love, mm -hmm. then it's probably not of God. Yes. Right? So mm -hmm. um, it sounds like you had originally, you had an assignment on your life, yeah. whether it be yes. the, <laughs> the person in the paramedic, maybe in the ambulance or, you know, these in the, in the hospital or what have you. But it sounded like there were some kind of curses initially okay. right mm -hmm. but then you had your your prayer family and they were mm -hmm. praying for you Thousands countering that those curses mm -hmm. but the one that really took you out of that environment was was god himself oh yeah and yeah. you are you are in now you you're meeting god you're mm -hmm. asking him questions you met your son mm -hmm. yeah by the My way daughter. what is what is his name because he's solomon um, excuse me Solomon. Solomon. Ah, mm -hmm. great name. I was, I was always going to name if I had a son, Solomon. And see, when I lost him, I was only four and a half months. So I, I hadn't been to the hospital, the doctor yet to see if I had a boy or girl. I don't believe at that point they could even tell that in 2010. Um, the sex. Ex well, they might. I don't know. They could. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I so I had no idea that he was. Um, and my daughter, too, that I lost um, in like 1989. Um, she I was 16. Um, she was like 22, I think. But I definitely didn't know her sex, you know, and or couldn't have. And uh so seeing what I have, you know, and knowing they're happy and knowing they run and play and he would do somersaults over his tiger, <laughs> you wow. know, and all the boys would have like a field play sessions and, and the girls would just hang out and play with butterflies and just do what girls do. And I remember them taking, uh, there were trees of fruit everywhere and they would take them this was crazy. So they would take them off and they would eat them, but no juice ever came. There was no skin. I actually still to this day, 10 years later, will not eat the skin of a fruit. <laughs> hey, thank you, Lord, that there are no skins of fruits. In <laughs> yeah. yeah. And no mess. Never mess. No messes, anything. No, yeah. no clean up on aisle five. Yeah. Uh, your daughter. So she was uh, about 22 mm -hmm. looking. Yeah. So, so they were this. This is a phenomena that we've heard about uh, previously, and also, as I mentioned, saw children in uh, in heaven. Mm -hmm. But um, you saw both of your children ha having returned. Now, there's the sense of loss that oh, you know, big mother time. and even a father feels in losing uh, <laughs> their children prematurely. Uh, but now, this uh, you have that peace, that assurance <laughs> that. Uh, you could not have had if you had not met them in heaven. It hurt me a lot, though, to be totally honest and transparent. That really hurt me knowing what they look like and and uh, just missed them so much more. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why. But funny thing, though, I asked God, I said, why did I meet them? Why did I have to see them, God? Because it tormented me like at holidays and stuff. <laughs> and he said... To make sure you came back. <laughs> That's why oh, his exact words. Oh yeah. 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 And I just was like, what? That was just something I never would have expected. And then he also told me to leave him presents. So every Christmas, I get them presents and expect that the angels will somehow give that to them in heaven. Even mm -hmm. if it stays right here on earth, they're going to, they're messengers, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So God oh, yes. just told me to start doing that. So I, I, do that. I leave them little gifts, little cars for Solomon. And, and, uh, yeah, we, I've always loved classic cars and stuff. So I get them a little classic car, uh, hot wheels and, and her little dolls. And, um, 
yeah, just things that would remind her, you know, like things that might look like me or um, just, yeah, so she could we, see her mom. <laughs> we so grossly underestimated the love of God. Oh, to sure. think that he wouldn't do that. And he does. He's omnipresent. Uh, yes. And we have the Holy Spirit residing in us as the as the as the temple, God's mm -hmm. temple, uh, yeah. through the Holy Spirit. So why wouldn't he? I call those postcards from uh, from heaven or from yeah. us to yeah. uh, heaven, represented by, carried forth by uh, the mail carrier, if you will, of, mm -hmm. uh, of the Lord Lord God oh, to, wow. uh, to our loved ones. Um, there there is that phenomena certainly of our need to know that our loved ones are okay or they're yes. they're in heaven but for them you know they don't have that same oh yeah uh, remorse or concern because they know exactly yeah there are no in heaven. In heaven. And when you came back you know you return to your mind and of course mm -hmm. there's this you know the cathartic process of having to filter through the brain again and yeah and that know, brings up an excellent point um sorry to interrupt but no, i just want to make sure not to forget but <laughs> it brought up this excellent point that when i was in that heaven and i found this in scripture since that i forgot about everybody on earth that wasn't mm -hmm. with me mm -hmm. i completely they left my mind completely and once god told me i was coming back then he showed me a reel like a camera uh reel um What's that a film, you know, like the camera old film negative? He it goes scrolling by me and it showed me my husband and my children, my septic kids. And um, and then he said, and then I go, because oh, that was in outer space too. And I go, and I said, I forgot them. And mm -hmm. and God said, you know, that's he said, because there are because if you would have remembered them, you would have been sad. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what he told me. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> and so, but then he made that gave me a sliver of wanting to come back. But yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, we should all look forward to heaven, but we've mm -hmm. got work to do here, don't we? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's what I. Here. Our purpose, purpose yeah. is plural. Mm -hmm. So it's not just some only a grandiose scheme of achieving this or that. It's in the moments that uh, that we have in this life that God mm -hmm. has given us a unique ability and singular ability to uh, accomplish as you are sharing mm -hmm. this and blessing so many people. Yes. Um, the um, time in heaven, you know, there's so many rich moments that you had. I don't want to shortchange any of them. As you're thinking mm -hmm. about your experiences, uh, have we missed anything? Is there something that you would like to, to share? Just his just the perfection of it all just how we don't have any sadness how all this life is all worth it to be in there because i know that when i was in my coma i knew a majority was in the health hell side of it but i think now that's because of the fact that it was torment and it lasts so much it seems so much longer right mm -hmm. so then heaven just seemed like that <laughs> you know, yes. and that was, uh, that gosh, I just, I have to remind myself I'm not perfect. Right. At all. And I have to remind myself in this world we live in right now that you're living for, to go back to where you were <laughs> nothing, no, nothing I can do. I, I can, I cannot not go back <laughs> mm -hmm. right. I, no matter what, no matter if I have to die for God. And I've asked him that, you know, am I going to be a martyr? <laughs> Cause I think we are in the end times. And, uh, and he just said, no, I have a different plan for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, well, he, yeah. So, but yeah, it's just so important for us to have boldness now, but you're only going to get it by being close to God. And you have to have a relationship with God. It's not that you go to church every Sunday and ignore the word and you just don't even talk to him about anybody. Mm -hmm. No one should not know that you follow Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. No yes. one. Yes. Even if I have people that can't stand me <laughs> because of it. And I know because God's told me, he said, it's not you, it's the spirit within you. You know, so and more than ever right now, and it's important to remember that and be bold. 
but you only get that strength with the word of God. And he had told me something recently. He said, what relationship is one where you just talk? And that's what prayer is, right? Mm -hmm. It's us talking to God. He said, you need to listen too. That's a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I started getting um, into the word even more. I started, uh, and then I started having a time when I just played soft music and I'll just close my eyes in the morning and say, and I got a really beautiful notebook that would inspire me to write in it. <laughs> and I just started saying, God, what do you have for me today? And one day he even told me, you're not going to work today. And I didn't have to go to work because they canceled it. <laughs> so he, so I know that he's speaking things. It's him, you right. know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, It'd be nice for some of us to get that word from God for a day off. So, but, <laughs> but that the point being, though, mm -hmm. that it would, should be conversational. Yes, it's a not just not just you know, you don't have to go into the prayer, prayer closet to mm -hmm. have a conversation with God. No, I talk to him all day. I yeah. sing. I make right. up little tunes and sing to right. him all the time. And, <laughs> and for yeah. those of you who might be a little jealous of those who have been to uh, mm -hmm. to heaven, not certainly not those who have been to hell, um, the vast majority of people, keep, please bear in, in mind that that there is this um, dichotomy between mm -hmm. the joy certainly and the blessing. Mm -hmm of being and having and perceiving face to face Lord God and Jesus as as he is and how he appears and the angels and what and so on and so forth. But there's also the after effect. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, returning, you know, it's because and there's an old adage, once you've been to the far to the city, excuse me, it's mm -hmm. hard to return to the farm <laughs> because the farm, you're in good. this world and there's no more striking contrast than one who has been to heaven and now comes back. Yes, and on my way back, that brings up a point, on my way back, uh, I remember I asked my last question and all of a sudden it was like a Google Earth where you go like this back into your body, just shoo. And uh, I, so I saw the earth as I came back into my body and for some reason it had a black soot on everything, on every blade of grass, on every building, on every person that came out of the womb, on every, um, I just never could explain it. It was like a goo, like a, I just have always been fascinated by that. And then, so I've looked into that too, and there's something there too, but um, yeah, it's just crazy. So that was extremely sad to me. And then my first thought when I woke up was not like, was not, I have to admit it was not, oh, yeah, I went to heaven. It was, oh, my God, it was all a lie. All mm -hmm. that we think is important, all that they push. I mean, like the media and, uh, well, just basically the media and all these actresses and actors and stuff, this fake look. And um, I said, none of it matters. And that was huge, depressing for me. <laughs> that mm -hmm. was really hard to know the truth. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be in your bubble, you know, yeah. it's, it's nice to be in that sometimes. I think that's why our, uh, our, one of our missions is to get people off of this world and the things in this world and the things that we hear on the news and the things that, uh, the mostly bad stuff mm -hmm. so that we can focus our minds and our hearts on heaven. So when you were, let's talk a little bit about that transition. So you are in this glorious pl place, having met your your daughter, your son, obviously God. Mm -hmm. you've, you've seen Jesus face to face. You've seen what he looks like. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen all of these wonderful aspects of, uh, of heaven. Um, how did you get back into your broken body? Because again, <laughs> you had been given less than a year to live mm -hmm. with a with a damaged heart yeah that all went away I, I got transformed in heaven i came back i didn't even need my pacemaker for a year and a half my heart actually went the same beat that it, the pacemaker was set on um and then i asked god i said why did i have to get that back did i really go because i've 
if other people can question what happened to me, believe me, I've questioned it a million times more. That's why I've obsessed over the word since. Um, and I, up to the, or to date, I think it's 38 back uh, backup scriptures to where I was. That I And I would say probably 30, I didn't even know, you know. Mm-hmm. So it existed like the he'll, he knows every word before it hits your tongue, you know. Um, so when I came back, though, it was... Uh, so I came back and they told me I would wake up on and off because I was just exhausted. You know, like my body, they were going to do a quadruple bypass and see in a coma, I could hear everything. I could hear, I was awake all day like a person is, you know, I was conscious like that. I just couldn't move or function. So I would hear them talking and they would say, we either have to take, we're going to have to take both legs and we're going to have to, um, she needs a quadruple bypass. And I screamed inside myself. I said, no, I'll die. I'll die. And then right then, my husband, unfortunately, ended up kind of abusive. So that situation's over now. But at that time, he starts screaming and says, you're going to kill my wife. Stop. And there were 12 doctors in the hospital room at that point, vascular surgeons and stuff. So he goes, so uh, uh, the head of, well, one of the heads of I think he was at that time, the head fellow there. Um, he said, okay, we're going to gather outside. Everybody, let's gather, gather outside. And then they ended up, uh, they were just going to, because I had a little gangrene on my right toes, they were just going to take my right leg too. And because I, my, my left leg below the knee ended up dying mm. in that pain. I remember the first thing, one thing that will always keep me out of hell are those screams I heard myself do because <laughs> my, when my leg died, I would try to grab it and I'd wake up from the coma even. And I would, cause of the pain being so extreme mm. and they would say, don't let her touch your leg. Don't let her touch your leg. And I would just scream like, like hell screams. Um, mm. And that really scared me. But, but so they, so I would about a month into it, they took my leg a week before my 39th birthday, I celebrated there. And uh, they said, they said, uh, well, we're going to have to get that pacemaker back in her. And they kept, cause I was externally paced at that time with a machine. And I said, I, I would wake up just long enough to say, I won't need it. I went to heaven and they laugh, they laugh. And then they said, we got to get this quadruple bypass done. And I'd, I'd wake up and say, I won't need it. I went to heaven. And mm. then sure enough, <laughs> I went to schedule it. The full they sent me home for a year because I wouldn't have lived at that point with a quadruple bypass. So um, they sent me home for a year to strengthen up. And then I went to my appointment, and the head nurse of cardiology at OHSU, said, who's now one of my friends, actually, her name's Patty Woods, and she goes, she goes, uh, tell me what you said way back then about when we told you you had to have. A heart surgery. And I said that I won't need it. I went to heaven and her eyes welled up with tears. And she said, Camille, your heart looks better than it did before you got sick. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Thank and you Dr. So Brover, you were healed. Yeah. Yeah. And you Dr. Um, Craig Brover, he's the head of pulmonology, cardiology and teaches for OHSU. He even said, I'll go on the camera. You know, this is what, you were not supposed to live through this. I mean, mm-hmm. they said less than a 1% chance to my mom. Yeah. And then I came back and I had liver failure, kidney failure, lung failure, um, heart failure. Uh, I was almost blind because my heart failure had gotten so bad. I had an extreme astigmatism, they called it, gone. I proved mm-hmm. that. I'm actually gathering documents right now to get all that together and uh, prove all the healing that has happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, immediate though. You yeah. are a living miracle. Oh God! Um, <laughs> and I know some of the that we were talking about earlier. I uh, been up in that uh, area and worked with some of the cardiovascular people uh, up there, and had been in surgery mm-hmm. uh, in uh, in the, the heart room. Uh, They're amazing. So yeah, yeah, what you're what you're explaining uh, jives clinically and spiritually, having <laughs> having experienced heaven. But yeah, you know, That's a lot of the, 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 <laughs> the physical mind and limitations of our ability to clearly you know, comprehend things, we tend to think of reality based on our understanding. 
-hmm. But when our right. understanding is exceeded, <laughs> mm -hmm. then we tend to doubt. Um, yeah. But uh, we've presented so many accounts. Yours is one of the most amazing accounts. Uh, the, the accounts in some total are almost undeniable. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had people who have been uh, you know, the, uh, physicians. Uh, we have been, you know, we have been people who, like yourself, who had suffered your entire life virtually with uh, a fatal, what would be a fatal otherwise heart disease. And, and in some total, you know, sci a true scientific mind would have to say, yep, yep, this is, this is, uh, this is something that's been validated. Yeah, that's why my head, the, the head cardiology pulmonologist there said, I'll go on camera, I'll do whatever you want. And because uh, he just still can't believe it. Mm -hmm. And God is, and I just say, it's God. And I don't think he's a believer, but, but hopefully that helped him, you know, I don't know, you know, but, um, but he was the one who helped me so much. He told me when I was laying on the bed three months into it, I started, I was crying every day and I was so sad and just my life depended on my looks growing up. You know, I just put so much investment into that. And so when I lost my leg, it was devastating to me, you know, and it still is really hard 10 years into it. And, um, but I had, val you know, validated myself from that and God just went Pew! and flipped me upside down and mm -hmm. said, Nope, you're not going to. But, um, I remember that car that cardiologist coming in or the pulmonologist, he came in one day and I was crying and I said, Oh no, this guy's not going to care. Cause he's a real reserved kind of guy, you know, really, uh, amazing. And he was, I was so scared to have him see me cry. So this still, so I was wiping my eyes and he comes in and he leans back and I go, oh no. And then he goes, Camille, you have a lot of people here that love you and you can sit on a wheelchair for the rest of your life and people will serve you. And he said, but, or you can get up and live. Hmm. And that was the first time I said, I thought I can walk again. Why hmm. not? Because they said I would be a vegetable. They put all this stuff over my life. Not him, but all the doctors. I've had so many vascular surgeons and different people coming in now. And uh, they would just, you know, she's going to be a vegetable. She's going to be this or that. And I remember my arm from the stroke being kinked up like that. And I was in the hospital bed and God said, just lay your hand over it. Go like this every day. And then so slowly it went back. <laughs> so he gave me all kinds of he said with my brain he said um learn guitar and your brain will come back mm. and so i did and now i can actually say i everybody says it too you're actually smarter now they don't understand it <laughs> wow yeah yeah clinically speaking this would be an impossibility mm -hmm. oh, yeah. all things are possible through christ who strengthens Absolutely. us so That's this is truly a a validated miracle. Mm -hmm. uh, this is truly validated. And I speak just from what you've told me and what I know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not only would you not be talking with us today, yeah. <laughs> but you would have probably died as a, even as early as a child or certainly. Oh, yeah. As a, as yeah, a, I wouldn't expect to, to live even past that. So God preserved your life. You have a purpose that obviously we're sh you're sharing that with us now. Yeah. Um, when you look back and you're speaking to our audience, and there are many who are just who have walking through suffering today, mm -hmm. or fear, or not knowing what the future holds, or something, or just you know, I I don't know. I'm not sure about. If I'm I'm going to be in heaven, if I mm -hmm. once I die, which is about a ninety nine point nine 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 percent chance, or close to a hundred, uh, speak to speak to them now, please. If you're not sure if you're going to heaven, ask yourself this: Do you believe that Jesus was the Son of God and died for your sins? Do you try your best every single day to wake up, to be positive, and to love others, and to serve God? 
try to be, and do you, and do you try to be close to him? Cause he knows your heart. If those questions are yes, that means you're going to heaven. Mm-hmm. We're not perfect. No one is, no one can be. We all make mistakes. I still fall and I walked with God, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? So if I can fall, anyone can. And mm-hmm. it's just about picking yourself up and it's not how you start life. It's how you end it. Mm-hmm. And you just get up over and over. I have got up so many times. I have been suicidal so many times. Um, but that was one thing that God cured me of was that. And because um, that's an assignment over your life from Satan. So you just get prayer over that, be it a good Bible teaching, healing, believing church, because it will change your life. Mm-hmm. And I believe uh, you, my sister, have uh, a gift of healing. Yes, you. I do. Actually. And so, yeah. and we've never talked about that. We didn't talk about that prior to this, but uh, I believe that's what the Lord had, has told me, yeah. that he wants you to pray for our audience now. Oh, great. For those who are asking to uh, for yeah. healing. I would love that. I would love that. And I do Thank pray you. all the time. I'm an intercessor for my church for healing and other things. So Excellent. right on. Yeah. Okay. And I also teach kids too, because I got to serve, right? <laughs> Ever God since you did that. Yes. Okay. Dear Lord God, we just thank you so much for today, Lord God. This has been an answered prayer for me. And I just thank you from the bottom of my heart, Lord God. And I just thank you for these people that are listening and opening their hearts to listen. That says so much right there, their boldness and open heart. Because if someone has an open heart, you can do anything. Lord God, I just pray healing. You know, all these people that are watching right now that are suffering from depression and anxiety and worry, Lord. And I just ask that you come over them right now with the spirit of peace, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you just have an immense, they are so love for them. You have so much love for us that we could never comprehend it, Lord. But I ask that you just place a, a supernatural peace over everyone watching right now and a supernatural healing in whatever area they need to be touched. I thank you, Jesus, that you did that on the cross with your blood, that you healed us, Lord God, that you forgave us of our sins. A lot of people listening right now need to forgive themselves. We we speak on that, Lord God. We just we speak that they just have a peace about themselves, Lord God, and just thank you, Jesus, that you healed them already. It's already finished. It's already done. We're working. Some of us are working for something that's already been earned. It's already been earned. We don't have to be perfect. And I thank you so much for that, God, or I would not be sitting here. I thank you, Jesus, for all these people watching and just they're reaching out to you, Lord God. I just ask that you bless um, Grandy too, and his wife, Renee, and, um, that other gentleman, I can't remember his name right now. Samuel. Yeah. Samuel, thank you. Samuel, right now, Jesus, in whatever area in their lives that they need most touch, Lord God. And I just thank you, Jesus, that you will bless his ministry because it is so powerful and reaches so many people. I ask that it continues to reach more and more people as as the end comes, Lord God. And we thank you, Jesus, for all these things in your mighty name. Amen. Mm, amen. Amen. If you uh <laughs> If you received a healing, please let us know, randykey.org. We want to hear from you. If you received Jesus, we want to hear from you so we can follow up with you Mm -hmm. uh, as you be in your walk in Christ. Um, If people want to uh, reach out a word for you, should they go to our site? Is there some other place you would like them to go? Um, Well, I have a a Facebook page that they're more than welcome. It's Camille, C-A-M-I-L-L-E. Mm-hmm. Triple A, that's my maiden name, T R I B O U L E T, and it has a dash uh, hall, H A L L. But if they just put Camille Triple A, they'll get to me. And uh, I will pray over you. I can help you in any way. So that I have the ability, um, I will. And just please seek a, a I just would like to end this with please seek a Bible, uh, Bible teaching church. Ask God to give you discernment when you go into these churches because there's a lot of different ones now that aren't godly. And so you want to make sure you're in a good Bible teaching church Lord, or from, from the Lord and, and definitely repent and ask for salvation before you can't anymore. Mm-hmm. Wise uh, advice, sage advice. And, uh, and also I would add to that and you're exactly right. Um, go to a church that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Uh, Amen. One that's alive. 
expecting that God can do all things. Yes, because uh, He can. You know, I've seen so much healing. Well, yeah. not even just for me, but I've laid hands and seen so much that people with broken ribs that come into church and pound on them within a few days because yeah. they're healed. You know, yeah. bones be healed, all kinds of stuff. So it happens. God is the well, same yesterday, today, and forever, people. So don't forget that. <laughs> it does happen. It happens more often than we are aware of or yeah. probably think. Uh, so, uh, Camille, this has been a tremendous blessing, and I thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you so much. This is such a such a blessing to me and, and so many other people that have been so excited to finally hear it this way instead of just uh, reading material. So, so thank you for asking me here and, and reaching out to me. That means the world. Well, the, the honor is, is all mine, all ours. And, uh, and the Lord is honored by, by you uh, and your testimony and your sharing the wisdom and the healing and the prayer, the insights and everything else that you've shared with us. So, um, for now, until next time, yeah. We've got some uh, great news, don't we? Awesome news, yes. If you are indeed in Christ Jesus, be of good cheer. Yes. Because heaven is in your future. Yes, and we overcome. <laughs> Amen. Ultimately, we overcome no matter what. Yeah. Take care. Yeah, take and care. Thank God. you so much. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like further information, go to our website at randyk.org where our mission is simple, to share the great news of God's love.